was confirmed from a new virus that became known as COVID-19. In the first year, more than 3 million people died, according to the World Health Organization, a figure that has now risen to almost 7 million. As far as the economic impact, the pandemic wiped an estimated $2 trillion off the world economy in 2020, a hit that it has yet to fully recover from. And governments around the world still face the hangover of trillions of dollars of debt taken on during the pandemic. Well, I'm joined now by Oliver Cornock, Global Editor-in-Chief at the research firm Oxford Business Group. Oliver, it's really lovely to see you. And, and one of the results of the pandemic is that you, you don't sit with me here in the studio. That was one thing you used to do pre-pandemic. You were a regular guest in the studio with me. But let's talk about the economic impact of this. I mean, where do you begin? Well, as you say, Sally, of course, it's important to recognise that human cost, um, that huge, those huge numbers of very ill people, those huge numbers of deaths, but also the, the if you like, economic hangover, which you rightly identify. And of course, that does then morph into some social impact as well. Crudely, the, the growth picked up after the pandemic um, died down. Um, we saw a high level of growth in 2021. But then, of course, the economic narrative moves along. And we've seen this combined, the, the after effects of the pandemic combined with other things such as the invasion of Ukraine um, and the and inflationary pressure to create economic problems that we're feeling now. But in terms of some specifics that are related to COVID, um, look at the workplace, working from home. You, you rightly identified that I no longer sit with you. Um, lots of people are working remotely. You look at the city of London. A lot of the um, buildings, a lot of the cafes, a lot of the restaurants, a lot of the businesses, tertiary businesses around um, industry based there are closed on a Monday and a Friday. There's been a huge social shift. Um, we talk about the mental health impact. We talk about the education impact. We talk about the health impact. These are big long term hangovers. Um, so the immediate macroeconomic impact is not simply about business and trade flows. It's also about the human cost as well. The two are very tied. They are extremely tied because when you look at the workforce, many obviously were put on furlough during that you know, period of time and many actually chose not to come back. And, and there is that economically inactive number that comes up in the UK and I'm sure in many other countries around the world as well, where people actually decided, this is it. I've ended my, my working life, as it were. I'm not returning. And yet they wouldn't have done that. That choice wouldn't have been made if COVID hadn't happened. Exactly. And I think we, put, we, we may look back uh, and with perhaps those, um, those very difficult tools, rose-tinted um, spe rose spectacles to say, was this a moment where the developed world and, if you like, the developing world um, reached a pivot point? Because we saw um, the response from a lot of developing countries, particularly, let's look at the Gulf, the Middle East, well-placed in terms of its financial heft, um, tackling this much more flexibly, much more dynamically than a lot of established economies. When you combine that with the, um, as you as you say, the effect on the workforce, that's had a massive long-term impact on productivity in developed countries, no greater than here in the UK. Unfortunately, we're out of time, which is such a shame. There is so much to discuss. But Oliver, we appreciate uh, your thoughts on this. Thank you for being with us this morning to talk about it. Well, let's